Welcome and aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're going to go across the sea to Osaka, Japan, to talk with my friend Eriko Hayashi. Eriko is a lawyer in Japan who has recently begun a new era in her personal and professional lives. Lawyers are often seen as advocates for other people or causes. However, lawyers also have their own lives to live. I've asked Eriko to share her journey with us. Eriko, welcome. Uh, ohayo gozaimasu. Uh, I know it's morning in Osaka. It's good to see you again. How are you? Great, thank you. How are you? Okay, all right. Well, except I understand it's sunny in Osaka. It's very wet in Hawaii, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll hopefully that'll change, uh, at least in Honolulu, soon. Uh, so uh, I wanted to ask you about your professional life, but before we go into that, I'd like you to tell us, please, a little bit about your personal life, where you were born, where you grew up, uh, you know, that, that type of background about yourself, please. Sure. I was born and raised in Shinomiya City in the western part of Japan, which is located in between Kobe and Osaka. I have moved several times when I was a child, and I had been used to moving around in my teenage. I could not fit in Japanese school system, which seemed to be based on a group mentality, and I prefer reading books and thinking a lot about the truth in life and human beings to playing with friends or group activities. After I graduated from high school in Nishinomiya, I enrolled Kyoto University Faculty of Law and lived in Kyoto for four years. Okay, all right. So, oh, to live in Kyoto, that must be have yes. been wonderful. Uh, it's yeah, a wonderful it was, city. Uh, a wonderful yeah. city. Yeah, I, I love to go there, and I often go there with one of our mutually good friends, Richard Goldstein. Mm -hmm. He he loves to oh. go there also. Um, I know. Every time he came to Japan, he goes, he goes to Kyoto. Uh, now, how about, why did you choose law? How did you get into law? What, what, what drew you to law? Yeah, actually, as I said, I was much more interested in literature and philosophy when I was in my teenage. So it would be more natural for me to choose that areas as a major at university. But I thought it was essential to me to learn about more about the real society and interact with people and gain actual experiences. So I decided to choose faculty of law as a major, which was a big challenge as an unsociable person like me at the time. In that context, I took the bar exam and became a lawyer. Well, you know, it's hard to believe you're, you think you're unsociable, but uh, because all the time I've known you, you've been very sociable. Um, no, uh, I, I, so. sorry? If so, my attempt was successful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, your website, a uh, very interesting website. Uh, you talk about this being the first year of, I hope I'm pronouncing it, Reiwa. And yes. it's, it's also the beginning of a new era for yourself, the mm -hmm. beginning of your firm. Please mm -hmm. explain what does Reiwa, what does that mean? And what does, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, what does it mean, the beginning of a new era? What is that for you? Uh, please explain that. Sure. Yeah, Reiwa is the name of a new era, which is an indication of a year of the reign of an emperor, Japanese emperor. We celebrate the beginning of such new era, era in May last year. Actually, I didn't originally plan to start my new farm on the same year with the beginning of Reiva, but it happened to be the same year. I joined my previous firm, Oebashi LPC and Partners, which is the uh, largest law firm in the western part of Japan, and started the first year of my law practice in 2001, which is the beginning of the 21st century. And it happened that I started my new farm at the beginning of Reiwa, which is another new era to Japan. As I said, it, I didn't originally plan to do so, uh, but it um, seems to me that my personal path is somehow synchronized with the big wave of the eras at large. 
Yeah. So Reiwa, Reiwa, again, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, is the emperor, a new emperor. And, uh, yes. and, and you had some feeling that came that you wanted to change what you were doing. And is this, is this a common feeling um, among Japanese? I mean, when the, the new era, a new emperor comes on, is this something that's a cultural thing? about Japan? Do all Japanese feel like we have to make changes or we look at ourselves or something like that? Uh, I would not say it is pretty common or it is homo for all the Japanese people, but I could but it could be regarded as a good opportunity to take for some people who wants to make up their mind to try a new thing or change something. That's my feeling. So it's kind of like uh it's a, a point in your life when you stop to think, maybe. Right. Uh, you, you, everything's happening. There's a new emperor. Okay. All right. And and it yeah. gives you a, a pause. You have a pause in your life, maybe. Huh? Is that a is yeah. that a correct? Right. Am, I, am I getting that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, so. I, I think correct. Okay. So, before you began the new era, in Osaka. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what were you doing? What, what was your professional life like? Um, I started my lawyer's life at Oebashi LPC and Partners, as I said, which is the largest law firm in Western part of, of, of Japan. And having been sponsored by Oebashi, I studied at LLM program at NYU School of Law in 2005. And then I was seconded to a large law firm in San Francisco in 2006. Having worked uh, for a few years in Oebashi after returning from the U.S., I became a partner in 2010 and also became the head, which was the chief legal representative officially of its Shanghai office. In 2016, I returned to Tokyo and kept working as a partner of Tokyo office until September 20, 2019, which was the last year. Okay. So... Oabashi, uh, I know a lot of the lawyers in that firm. I really like them. It's a really good firm, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've 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 seen several of them over the years and got to be pretty good friends with them too. So, uh, I I know that was a good firm. So I know uh, that uh, you had a lot of good experience. What what type of law were you practicing at Oabashi? What 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 areas of law? Okay. Uh, I would say that I had been a kind of generalist of the cross-border legal practice. Of course, my major area was China because I have spent uh, six years there. Or, and, uh, but I have dealt with legal matters regarding uh, various jurisdictions. The practice areas that I covered was also pretty much broad and uh, with some particular focus on corporate law, intellectual property law, and contract law. I know the general trend for law practice now is specialist, but I have an idea that the more complicated the actual world becomes by such as technology and the globalization, the more professional generalists are necessary, even in a legal practice. And uh, generalist fits my character and nature more than a specialist, I think. So kind of a, a general practice of law. Well, that, that's kind of what I did too. Uh, and, yeah, and and I would like associate with specialists at times, but I would like more the general idea myself too, yeah. as I was practicing law. And and like you, I was once with a large firm, and then I went out on my own. Uh, you 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 spent time in China, and uh, what was that like? What did what what type of things did you do in China? What type of practice and what what did you learn from practicing mm -hmm. law in China? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I learned a lot of things and particularly uh, I learned that the more complexity and uncertainty from various aspects such as jurisdiction, cultural background, language, or governmental system exist in the matter, the more room for lawyers to contribute to exists. I enjoyed learning how to be creative, uh, innovative, flexible, and communicable to deal with such complexity and uncertainty in resolving matters in China. 
Yeah, so it, it kind of broadened your whole life experience and your practice in a way. You learned how to talk to different people. Um, what, mm -hmm. what uh, I mean, is there any particular case that uh, within your practice that uh, you remember that was meaningful to you and that uh, you can tell us about without disclosing uh, confidential mm -hmm. information? Tell us a little bit about perhaps mm -hmm, something that sure. affected you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in one case, I served as a leading counsel in the infringement cases of the Chinese intellectual property rights, including machinery patents, copyrights of controlling software, etc. That was the most, one of the most impressive matters that I handled in China. And what what happened in that case without without yeah. going into, you know, this, without telling okay. us things that are confidential, what can you, what, what was that case yeah. about, you know, what, what happened? <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> the infringer was originally a small company, but they became uh, so successfully as to prepare for going public by profit they gained through the infringement activities. My client, which is a large Japanese machinery corporation, faced to the situation where they have to abandon Chinese market if the infringement keeps going. The client first hired Chinese law firms. Although they won the cases, it did not ultimately resolve the problem and infringement kept going. The client took it seriously and retained me and asked me to take the whole control of any legal measures in China to achieve the goal. We brought various measures in multiple cities in China and fought about for four, eight years. I want to talk about more, but it will be uh, confidential. So um, it's just <laughs> well, simple I mean, it, it sounds very complex. Uh, and yes. I mean, an area of law, intellectual property. And as we know, right. as we know, I mean, well, I don't know if uh, there is always been complaints about that uh, happening. And, uh, you know, in order to, to fight it, wow, eight years, eight years. Yes, yes eight years. Um, yeah, but it's still. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. And, and I guess having that type of case makes it so you have to learn to talk across culturally and with all sorts of people, uh, uh, not only personally, socially mm -hmm. but legally mm -hmm. right yeah right okay now right. Uh, also on your website you mentioned uh, very nicely interpacific bar association um mm -hmm. tell us what is your relationship with that it's one of my favorite organizations but i so i do know a little bit but tell us what your what your feelings are about the interpacific bar association what it is and and how you got involved mm -hmm. yeah uh, you know this more about uh, about this more than I do uh, since you are one of the charter members. But anyhow, I, in my impression, uh, I, I will talk about my uh, feeling and uh, idea. Um, it is an association of, bus of business lawyers who are allocated or interested in the Inter-Pacific region and I attended its annual conference held in Seoul in 2004 uh, for the first time and I instantly knew I loved this association. Since then, I have continued attending the annual conferences. This association is unique in having an origin in Japan and their philosophy is called Spirit of Katsura. It's a, one of the uh, beautiful city in uh, Japan, Chiba Prefecture. The association is full of friendship-minded members and I made a lot of lifelong friends like you uh, from all over the world. It has greatly widened up my mind to the world. I had served as a committee chair of cross-border investment committee of the Inter-Pacific Bar Association for eight years, uh, which is four years each as a chair and as a vice chair until last year. And I had managed and organized more than 10 sessions at every annual conference. It has been a great opportunity to learn what's going on in the legal practice on the global basis and also to get to know each other with pr practitioners on various regions. I have been officially nominated as an officer 
the deputy committee coordinator of the association for the annual general meeting on June this year, and looking forward to contributing more to the association if it is approved. Well, I, I have a feeling it will be approved and uh, that we will be seeing each other at another Inter-Pacific Bar meeting. Uh, we're going to take a one minute break right now, Erico, mm -hmm. and we'll come back. Sure. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, the host of Hawaii Together on the ThinkTech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Hawaii Together deals with the problems we face in paradise and looks for solutions, whether it's with the economy, the government, or society. We're streamed live on ThinkTech bi-weekly at 2 p.m. on Mondays. I want to thank you so much for watching. We look forward to seeing you. Again, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Aloha, I am Mark Schklav, and I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program, and we are back with Eriko Hayashi, who is in Osaka in the morning, while we are here in the afternoon in Hawaii. Eriko, you mm -hmm. went back to Osaka. You, you, you began your new era in uh -huh. Osaka. Why, what, tell us why you did that. What, what drew you uh -huh. back to Osaka or it, to uh -huh. Osaka? Actually, I have been totally satisfied with my professional life in my previous firm, Oebashi. I had many good clients, intellectually stimulating matters, smart and nice colleagues, and great office environment. My status as an equity partner was also comfortable. However, there happened things which made me deeply think about my life who I am and what I really want to do for the rest of my life. I originally aimed ever since I chose law practice as my career, I had tried to be a practical, sociable and learn the real society as much as I could. And I had so much enjoyed and been dedicated as to almost have forgotten about who I originally was. As I said, I was only always looking for the truth in life and human beings when I was in teenage. It was probably because I was born into a serious Buddhist family and I had practiced Buddhism since I was born. My father got serious careers in 2014 and passed away in 2016. Through this experience, I have practiced Buddhism more seriously than ever. Later, there happened some other things which led me to thinking more about my life. In June 2019, which is last year, I could no longer suppress myself and they decided to go for a new path based on my own vision. I have a vision, but I need time and freedom to think about and prepare for how to special, specifically realize it. Therefore, I decided to leave the firm where I had been discharged 100% responsibility in providing legal services as well as management of the firm. and I and to become independent. So kind of finding yourself is what I hear. You, you're, yeah, you, you right. wanted the time, you, you'd worked hard, you'd been very successful, done a lot of interesting complex cases, and you wanted some time to find yourself. Uh, and so you went to Osaka. And, and mm -hmm. it, it, what, is the lifestyle different in Osaka? What's it like to practice law and yeah. live in, in Osaka compared to Tokyo or, or, or Shanghai? Yeah, it's totally different. Um, I rent a small office just five minutes away from my home on foot. It is on the foot of a small mountain in a residential area where I can enjoy seasonal flowers and trees. It is just 20 minutes away from the center of Osaka City and 10 minutes away from the Osaka International Airport by car. So I don't feel any trouble to travel to wherever I want. Work and life is not something which need to be balanced here, but rather work and life is, as it were, seamless and not stress-free, unite. 
knighted. So, yeah. So I hear you saying that you're, you, you don't, you want to make your life and your work, your personal and your professional together. Mm -hmm. You want them balanced and intertwined in a way. That's what I hear. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and, and what type of law are you doing the same type of law in Osaka as you did before? Actually, it's not right now. There is only me in my farm. So I basically practice law to the extent I can handle by myself, such as by providing legal consultations and drafting, reviewing contracts, etc., which require a few fewer human resources. Oh, I see. I weigh uh, constructing a trustworthy long-term relationship with a client more heavily than working on a project basis. But it does not mean that I will only do small matters. If, I, if needed, I can build up a team to collaborate with other lawyer specialists outside depending on their expertise. So, so you're, you're, you're finding yourself personally and professionally. And also, uh, I, I hear part of your philosophy about the practice of law is not necessarily mm -hmm. to focus on a subject, but to focus on the client. Is that correct? Yes. So what, what, well, yes, what yes. tell us, tell us, uh, you know, what is your philosophy uh, about life uh, and the practice of law? Can you go into it a little bit more? Mm -hmm. yeah, my philosophy is uh, based on the Buddhist teaching, like I said. My philosophy is clear. Oneness of mind and body, as well as oneness of myself and our surroundings or others. And al altruism, orderliness, and wisdom are my philosophy in all part of my life, including practice of law. You can see this more on the website of my firm, which is only has Japanese uh, so far, though. Well, well okay. Well, what is your website? Uh, by right, tell us what it is. My website. Yeah. Um, my website says uh, about my philosophy. I see. I see. And and um, okay. So. With respect to your looking forward, what are your goals for yourself, your life, and your profession in Osaka? Yeah, mm -hmm. my goal for myself is uh, to change my uh, self by a one, which is oneness of my mind and the body of myself, like I said, and change my surroundings, oneness of myself and the surroundings, as I said, and ultimately contribute to changing the world. It means that everything always starts with brightening my mind and body. And as a consequence of the principle of a cause and effect, which is also the prism principle, the goal shall be achieved. Okay. All right. So, and, and you're, you're on that pathway now, right? You're, you're, yes. on, you're on that journey right now. Mm -hmm. It's yes. a new, new journey for you. Okay, independent journey. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I have to ask you these questions because everyone's asking about coronavirus. What's happening? <laughs> how, how has that affected you in Japan and Osaka? And, and also, uh, you know, I know the sumo tournament is going on in Osaka, but nobody can come to it. So how, how do people <laughs> feel about that? So a couple questions uh... there for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the coronavirus affected all parts of Japan, including Osaka, and people uh, uh, suggested to uh, not to travel a lot. And uh, as you said, the, uh, there is no audience in a small tournament. But generally, uh, it's inconvenient and they're all kind of uh, disappointing. Uh, but uh, generally, people accept the situation and understand the uh, importance of uh, behaving. Uh, like that, so uh, people understand and accept. Are, are things improving in Japan? Or are they? Can you tell? Are they getting better or not better? Um, I think uh, it's kind of getting uh, under control. It's, it's under control, and the, the people uh, regard the, the situation not as a pandemic uh, in Osaka, at least. So uh, I, I think the situation is uh, kind of kept un kept con under control. And and is there any thought about the Olympics? Is there any? Yeah, what what is all... the Japanese people? What are they thinking about 
the Olympics. Yeah, the, the Japanese government, including Prime Minister Abe, really wants to make it happen. And so, uh, so far, there's no official uh, uh, news which says that it will be uh, affected, like uh, to be uh, postponed or cancelled. But uh, people, some people um, are wondering if it is true, <laughs> if we can really do that. So yeah, we'll see, we will see the situation. Yeah, until probably May or yeah, next okay. month. And so right right now, like Sumo, uh, it's on. Mm -hmm. uh, although Sumo <laughs> has no spectators, I, I can't imagine what the Olympics would be uh, without spectators. Yeah. But um, well, we, we have about two minutes left. Um, in those two mm -hmm. minutes, um, please tell me what have you learned about life and the practice of law from your experiences and and what advice what advice would mm -hmm. you give lawyers about living life and practicing law mm -hmm. yeah i learned how the world in the society is going on through various types of actual cases uh, and i have um, learned how to manage and control myself under a highly pressured situation with a lot of responsibilities, difficulties, and time constraints. And I have also learned how to communicate always uh, people in a different background, personality stakes, as well as how to collaborate with other business partners, which is wonderful. I have also learned satisfaction and joy to contribute to the client and society through practicing law. I realize that there are a lot of things we can do through the practicing law, but at the same time, I also learned its limitation, which is the reason why I started my new life to seek a way to contribute, possibly beyond the limitation of practicing law. So um, my suggestion to lawyers is now it is an era, uh, it is a time where the technology and globalization are uh, uh, go, go coming, uh, developing uh, very rapidly. So we have to be flexible to uh, adjust to the uh, society in the world. And uh, the lawyer are sometimes uh, kind of a single-minded, sometimes single-minded <laughs> and kind of stubborn. And so they try not to uh, change themselves and be conservative. But uh, I think uh, just give it a try and you'll find a new thing which you can contribute to the society more. Uh, as Also, uh, you can be ha feel happier um, ultimately. So kind of be a little more open as a lawyer, uh, open to more experiences, open to maybe finding what you like as a lawyer. Uh, is, yes. that, is that correct? Yes. Okay, yes. now, my, now uh, sorry. My, one of the, the philosophy is open every possibility. So yeah, you, you can. Open every yeah, possibility, right. I like that. If, if somebody mm -hmm. wants to contact you, how do they contact you in Osaka? What's the best way to get a hold of you? Um, please go to my website. There is an uh, information, uh, information how to contact me and uh, you can email me at info at erilaw.com. Uh, this, this is it, the best way to reach me. Info at erilaw.com? <laughs> erihafenlaw.com. Oh, okay. All right. Very good. Very good. Uh, very nice. Thank you very much. Uh, I look forward to seeing you the next time we get to Japan. If not, you can come to Hawaii. But uh, thank you for being my guest today. Aloha. Uh, and we'll see you next time.